Paul, RW, down here in the Mountain Storm shop. I'm doing some acrylic fabrication. I wanted to share some tips and tricks with you guys if you're interested. If you're not into this stuff, then this isn't the video for you. But if you're my client or you are interested in trying to build something like a three bay reservoir for your own PC, I'll give you some tips and tricks that would also be applicable to just about building anything out of acrylic when you want it to fit really, really well. In this case, we're building something that's going to be three DVD units high and obviously the same width as a DVD unit and it has to fit into a PC case. So let's go take a look at something real quick. First of all, I want you to see that there's a little bit of play between the face plate of the DVD and the bezel of the PC. That's normal. It's a working tolerance. You should adhere to that. Okay, I also want you to notice that it fits inside the PC case nicely. It fits snug. Right? However, as you can see, this is much wider. It'll never go in a PC case. So, if you're cutting your face plate, well, obviously one way to go is you take a, a piece of material and you would cut it to this width. How would you do that? Well, this is how I do it. I don't measure it. I set it right down here on the table saw and I get the blade within just a smidge of touching the face plate and I lock down the saw, the, the lock down the fence. Now I cut my piece and I cut it to length. Then it's going to be too long, obviously, so then I would just lay this down, draw a line, draw a line, draw a line, and I would cut it a little oversized. And then I would take my face plate that I just cut, maybe a little bit oversized, and I would go on over here and I'd say, hey, how does that fit into my case this way? And I would want that little bit of play, just like you'd have in the factory, because you've got to have a little bit of variance, if, especially because I'm building this off a mule PC case for a client. This case may be just a little bit different. Okay, so now I've got a height to work with. So now I know what my front height is. Well now I know I need to, to in this case we're going to be trapping the sides between the top and bottom and everything needs to work out flush. Okay, so now I will go over to the saw again and I would reset the saw so that it's the width of the body. Now I would recut my off cut so that it's the width of the body. And now, since I know that my client wants the body of it to be flush to the front and back, he specced that out for me, he wants it flush, front and back. Well then, my front and back panels have to be exactly the same size. So no problem, make them the same size, cut them the same size. But you can see that they are two different widths. Now, my client specced out a specific length or depth that he wanted his reservoir to fit into the case. So I know what width these have to be, right? These, the back, top, and bottom all have to be the same width. But in terms of how long it's going to be, this is when you would take your front and your back, lay them on top of each other, and you would take your two width cut part, right, that's maybe too long, right? and then you would mark it to seven and an eighth, right, like there. You cut it and you come back and check it and see if it's seven and an eighth. And it is. Okay. Now, you're going to do your sides, okay? Well, you already know that your sides and your top and bottom all have to be the same length. They have to be the same length. So now you can stack all these parts up and make sure they're the same length. Right? But obviously your sides are going to be a different width. And what do your sides have to fit? Your sides have to fit this height that you've already determined for your front and back. So now you would take your sides and you would stack them on top of your top and bottom and they should be flush. So now you've done a whole lot of fitting and checking and everything without calipers or trying to work to numbers or pencil lines or any of that. You're, you're working with eyeball and feel and checking and fitting and trying to keep your table saw settings 
So if you're cutting one part at a certain size, you want to cut all your parts at that size without resetting your table saw, if at all possible. Now, if you have internal parts in the reservoir, you know, like a regular reservoir I wouldn't, but a waterfall reservoir like this has internal parts that have to fit tight. So now you got to work between the sides, right, and whatever the width of your top, bottom, and in this case, everything is going to be, these three pieces are all going to be the same. Right? And now you're going to have to get your internal parts to be the same width. And depending on, you know, the internal parts here are going to be cut down. So this, this is irrelevant right now, but it's this dimension that I'm working to. So that's just a real quick tip or trick for how you can get very, very precise, perfect fitting. Uh, and you're not using a lot of measuring, a lot of pencil marks. You're not trying to work the pencil marks, which are very imprecise. Uh, you don't want to be using a scribe on plastic because what if you scribe it in the wrong place? Now you've got a scratch there. So you're working from actual objects. And if possible, you're using those objects. Set up your table saw. And then once you've got good dimensions that you know are right, you transfer those dimensions. Again, working from a physical part to an unknown part until it is known and then you check everything against itself and of course everything has to be square and perpendicular and all that but just a quick video to share a tip or trick about acrylic fabrication when you're trying to build an object to fit inside of or be exactly the same dimension as a known object thanks for watching guys stay tuned for the next tip or trick coming right up